Hi, Mr. Richards here. Today's lesson is on changes in dimension. And what we'll learn is how to find the surface area of similar solids and how to find the volume of similar solids. So our key concept, surface area of similar solids. If solid X is similar to solid Y by a scale factor, then the surface area of X is equal to the surface area of Y times the square of the scale factor. Now cubes are similar solids because they have the same shape and their corresponding linear measures are proportional. The cubes at the right are similar. The ratio of their corresponding edge lengths is 8 over 4 or 2. Notice they took 8 over 4, which is 2. The scale factor is 2. So to find how their surface areas are related, you're going to multiply by 2 squared, which is 4. That's going to be true for any similar solids. So in our first guided example here, the surface area of a rectangular prism is 78 centimeters. What is the surface area of a similar prism that is 3 times as large? You're going to take that scale factor of 3 and square it, to get 9 and multiply to get 702 centimeters squared. So in our guided example A, the surface area of a triangular prism is 34 square inches. What is the surface area of a similar prism that is twice as large? Well, surface area is going to equal that original 34 times twice as large. Well, that's 2, but we're going to square it. So surface area is going to equal 34 times 4. So surface area equals 136 in our units, 136 inches squared. What about B? The world's largest box of raisins has a surface area of 352 square feet. If a similar box is smaller than the largest box by a scale factor of 1 48th, what is the surface area? Well, this time, for example, B, Surface area is going to equal the original 352, and we're going to multiply that by the scale factor of 1 48th. We're still going to square it. So surface area is going to equal 352 times, well, 1 squared is 1, over 48 squared is 2,304. When you square a fraction, you square both the numerator and the denominator. And now when we multiply these together and simplify, you could get the fraction answer of 1170 seconds or just 0 0.15 15 hundredths feet squared. And we'll just go with the decimal 15 hundredths feet squared. What about the volume of similar solids? If solid X is similar to solid Y by a scale factor, then the volume of X is equal to the volume of Y times the cube of the scale factor. And so we'll take the scale factor and cube it. And we look at our guided example, the triangular prism has a volume of 432 cubic inch, or yards. If the prism is reduced to one-third its original size, what is the volume of the new prism? Well, one-third is our scale factor. Cubed is 1 27th multiplied by the original, and you get 16. And if we take a look at C, a square pyramid has a volume of 512 cubic centimeters. What is the volume of a square pyramid with dimensions one-fourth the size of the original? Well, volume is going to equal the original, 512, multiplied by the scale factor, in this case, one-fourth, and that's going to be cubed. So volume is going to equal 512 times, and to cube this, one cubed is one, and four cubed is 64, so 1 64th. And when we multiply that by 512, our result is 8. So 8 centimeters cubed. And then we can take a look at D. A cylinder has a volume of 432 cubic meters. What is the volume of a cylinder with dimensions one third of the original? Well, once again, volume equals 432 times our scale factor 1 third cubed. So volume is going to equal 432 
times 1 cubed is 1, 3 cubed is 27. And when you multiply these numbers together, you are going to end up with 16. So 16 meters cubed. And just a little note for those of us who do like to solve these on calculators. Whether, when you take the 432, you could try to multiply it by 27, or 127th, excuse me, or multiplying 432 by 127th, I will tell you, is the same thing as taking 432 divided by 27. And you can do that as long as your numerator is 1. In our last guided example, the measurements for a standard hockey puck are shown at the right. The giant hockey puck at left is 40 times the size of the standard puck. Find the volume and surface area of the giant puck. Well, for volume, we actually went through pi r squared h, and then surface area, 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h. We found the volume and the surface area, so we actually had to calculate it in this one. And once you get those to compare the volume, then you're going to take a scale factor of 40 cubed and multiply for the surface area, 40 squared and multiply. And that is it for this lesson on changes in dimension. Good luck.